Mario Maker. Hey, I'm your player too, and you're watching Linda the Game. Oh. I mean. Are we good? We're good. Too loud? Too loud? Not loud enough? Does it sound pretty low? <laughs> can yeah. you guys all hear us? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear us in the back. Yes. 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 Our team, can you hear me? Kind of. Hmm. Good. Sounds good. What is going on? My name is Linda, aka the Gander Girl. To my right is Captain Petro. We want to take the time to thank you guys for stopping by, saying hi. I know it's a con, I know you have a lot of things to do, so we want to thank you all. Yes, very much thank you all for taking the time out of the convention to come listen to haggling tips and techniques with Captain Retro. Yes, Linda. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, do you want to go over, we're going to kind of do a podcast style, we'll just have a little oh, chat, yeah. we will take questions at the end. Uh, I've been in the game of buying and collecting for 15 years now. I've been collecting the whole wow. lot, really hardcore for about 15 years. YouTube showed up three years ago when I, my band stopped playing. Uh, what was your band name? My band is called Echoes In, and it's a modern rock band. And I was making pretty good money playing in a band, but then the babies happened. The drummer had a baby, the guitar player had a baby, the band stopped playing live, and I was like, what am I going to do with my time? And a buddy sent me a video of, I think it was the Game Chasers, like, don't you do this kind of stuff? And I extended the video, and I was like, holy crap, this is exactly what I do. There's people making shows about this. I'm going to make my own show, and that's how I got involved with it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make my own show about my own stupid life and the things that I do. Hey, it's not stupid. It's, oh, it's, I'm pretty stupid. Yes, it is. <laughs> See? I've got, they, they got proof. Well, I can't trust these guys. So that's how I got started. And Restoration and, and making things work again has been like the biggest drive for me. Uh, finding something broken and making it live uh, makes me super happy. So that's why I'm still in it. The collecting side of it, three, two and a half years ago, I sold most of my collection to fund pinball and arcade madness. And that has turned into like 28 arcade machines and 11 pinball machines. And I own an arcade in Tacoma, Georgia now. It's bad. I'm back on the home collecting again, which is why I love doing the, the hunting and tips uh, panel that we're So what are you collecting I'm for? I'm getting to use it. Well, I'm back on this, the regular Nintendo and the Super Nintendo is my main jams. So yesterday, I left the convention yesterday and I went on Facebook Marketplace and I made a deal before I got back to the hotel and I picked up Ninja Gaiden 3 uh, and The Untouchables and a couple other games. They're like, I need that one, I need that one, I need that one. I don't, I don't want a full list. I'm not going for a full set. I'm going for a fun set and a fun list. And if I like it, I keep it. So that's where I'm at with it. Uh, what about your background in this? For me, I didn't start collecting until about three years ago when I moved to Florida. And I saw that the East Coast had way more selection that was I was looking for than in the Midwest. Because I came from the Midwest. And when I saw everything was more like beat-em-ups and I couldn't find, I was literally, don't you start with me, I'm not. So when I found like, I couldn't even find a good clean copy of Final Fight and you could find it everywhere in the East Coast and Florida. And that was just because the demographic was bringing over when they were traveling to Florida, it was like the mainstay for the snowbirds. They had a a lot of money and they're just like, you know what, I'm just going to bring all my games and then trade them off and get everything else. And so then I started collecting more for that and then now I'm more into, I'm going to get my game gear going. So I'm going to fix my game gear. Sadly, they're both not working. I do have to do that. Capacitors. I yeah. Can that. Okay. So, <laughs> yay. <laughs> so now I'm going to get trying to get most of the uncommons. I'm not going to go for the rare stuff. I don't, I don't have the money for that. That's why we're doing this. I, I like I'll go for the rare stuff or the expensive stuff if I can get it for the right price. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I, again, I like fixing things so much that I'm generally looking for broken stuff to begin with. Like, when I go out looking, I'm hoping to find a couple broken consoles, a couple things that somebody doesn't want a buttload of money for, so I can put some time and money into it and flip it and get something I want out of it. Um, 
this whole hobby for me has been a make it as free for myself as I can type of situation. Because um, it's ridiculous. When I sold, I sold my collection, I had maybe twenty thousand dollars in like retail value and stuff. But I sold cartridge games from Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Turbo Graphics, a lot of the big banger stuff. I sold it for thirteen five. I took a made a guy a pretty good deal. Turned that into pinball machines, and like I've been after those games again for the last year. I've been after all my Super Nintendo and Nintendo stuff. The hard part's going to be finding it all in the box again. I had a, most of it was boxed complete because of years of finding a box, finding a manual, holding on to it in the box, and then oh, I got the game now, and I got to compete with it. You know? um, do you want to go over like tips first? What do you, you want to talk about? Sure, why not? Well, give me your give me your top three tips you think for uh, for game hunting techniques. Basically, you have to be an early bird and make sure that you double check the listing because I've had plenty of people that they act like they're going to sell all their games and literally they're just selling one game for the lot. So make sure you read fully what they're selling you because <laughs> I even bought one box because I thought it was a good deal and they said, no, we're selling the box. So I'm like, no, you're selling you the game. <laughs> and also, when you're going, Learn the area you're in. Find where all the people that are going to the game stores, like ask them what area you're from. I bet you any money in like a couple months, they're gonna do a yard sale when it's the summer. And then find out like, what is the area you go to? Like I talk to a bunch of people that I go to the game stores and like, what's your what's your tactic when you do? And they literally be like, yeah, I go to this neighborhood and that neighborhood has a bunch of people that are they're getting rid of their collection. And I'm like, well, are they getting rid of what? And they're like, oh yeah, for Friday, Saturday, they usually get rid of all their Nintendo. So I go on that day, and I ask them, I'm like, hey, what are you gonna do? And they're like literally setting up, and I'll go, okay, so it's five o'clock, what do you got? And they'll tell me, like, I have a completely lost this, what do you want from it? And they'll literally haggle me right then and there, because nobody else is there, so. Make sure you don't let them tell you that that's the price, fight for your prices. Always be haggling. Yes. That my my three top tips are: uh, be kind and courteous. Don't be a, don't never come up being a jerk about stuff. Try and be as cool and calm as you can about stuff, especially when you know something's worth more than they're asking. Don't don't go up there and be like, you want five bucks for that? And they're they're asking ten, and it's a thirty dollar game, and you're like, you want five bucks for that? Pay the ten. Pay the ten. You know what I mean? Like that's a deal. You've already got the deal. Um, Network, 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 which is, the YouTube thing has been phenomenal for finding other people that love the same things I love. And they they might find a game and be like, dude, I found this game, do you need this for your collection? I do a lot of trading, a lot of hooking people up with stuff or holding on to games I find because T-Belly might run it or whoever. Mega thing has like, dude, can you hold that game for me? It, it, it hasn't happened, but it could happen. Um, me and I, what's his face? Dan from the Metal Gaming Club, if you know Dan, who at Metal Gaming Club. Uh, Dan has, I helped him complete his Wii collection for free. Like, I sent him six crappy Wii games that I don't need or want, and they're worth maybe three or four bucks, but he's going for a complete Wii set. So, network, and I wasn't expecting anything back from that, but he sent me a stack of Nintendo Power magazines, like, and a record from his band, and I was like, dude, how cool is that? So, now I'm collecting for Nintendo Power magazines again. Yes, I can't but do that. It put a little bug in my ear. I'm like, no, no, now I need all of these, I guess. So, that happens. Uh, always be networking. Ask everybody you know. Don't be ashamed. I love games. I love old games. You have old games. Every yard sale you go to, if they don't have games out, ask. Do you have old video games? You got anything in the back? Like, kids play Nintendo? Whatever you got to do to get that conversation started. Always be asking and hustling. And then the third one is diligence pays off every day. If you, you don't have to go out every day, like just randomly search, but try and, you know, Facebook Marketplace, Offer Up, Craigslist, Let Go, Yard Sale websites. I'm constantly looking for stuff to fund my habit. And my habit basically, you know, there's drugs and then there's video games. And like, I'm not sure which one is which, which one is better. Video games is pretty hardcore though, like I'm pretty hardcore about it. So they just made the I can imagine if I was a drug addict that I'd be dead by now, what type of what I put into going after video games. Um, and again, I'm trying to turn it all into pinball machines, which is 
my thing. Like, I, even if I, like, that Ninja Game 3 I picked up yesterday, it's going to fund something else, you know what I mean? I'm not holding on to that one. I will when I get it in the box, but, like, that one's a $150 game in the box, so I'll, I'll you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to find it cheap unless you keep looking at it there. And you will. I, I know a guy who found a 99 cent stadium event at the first floor. South Carolina's had that happen twice in the last, like, two years, where people found dollar versions of stadium events. Uh, it's out there. The stuff is still out there. And just keep looking. Just keep looking. I will say, you're going to go game hunting, and you're going to find nothing, and don't discourage. But keep going at it, and find a different flea market. Go out to a city that you've never been to. You might not have seen it. It might not have been picked through yet. I've been to random cities that I saw, there was no game stores, but there was a bunch of pawn stores around them. So I checked that, and literally I found random games for like a dollar a piece, and they were, it was like Shadow of the Colossus, I went and found, um, it was like Final Fight for a dollar, because the staff did not know what they had. And they literally, it was, it was completely boxed. It looked like somebody just got rid of, yeah, it was just like they got rid of their collection, it looked crisp and brand new. So I literally got that and then I went and sold it back to my game store and I got a pop from that and I'm gonna buy a game that I want. Yeah, pawn, pawn shops are gold, generally. Uh, right now, I'm sure they're, they're both disc stuff you're gonna find in the pawn shops. The larger stuff is pretty much drawn up, but it is still out there as well. I, there are random thrift stores and places. I have a couple of honey holes in Atlanta that once a week I'll call up and check and they run new games in. Guys that flip lockers and have a thrift store and they go buy storage lockers and every week just check in with those guys. Hey, you find the games this week? You find the games this week? I'm constantly asking about games. Oh uh, yeah, in Vegas but, the storage lockers are ridiculous. Like okay. people don't pay theirs and then people are buying them up for like 50 bucks a piece and they're finding them like rare. One guy found a complete inbox, box of this. Just chilling in there. I just had a sealed one of those that yeah. so long. Two. Yeah. Um, I need to that one. Alright. Uh, what was I talking about? Uh, I don't know if I'm talking about overseas. Like, she's lived overseas, so she's not. No, I did not live overseas. That's why you said you lived over there. Like, no, you've been. I've visited. Been. Well, she's busy. Okay. So, so she knows European market way better than I do. Okay. First off, Google lies to you way worse than over here. I was told that several game stores were going to be open on different days than they were. So basically what I say, Jess, is get apps that are not for internet. You can literally get apps that have your collection, everything, because when I call my, my seller service, they're like, oh yeah, you are going to be fine where you go and you're going to be okay. I was not. I literally found hot spots where for locals only you had to have a phone number for that place. So I recommend buying a phone for that area and paying a few extra bucks and letting it go because I was stranded when I went to go see an arcade in Rome and I don't speak Italian so it was even worse and so I had to write the store number down on there and tell them. So it was literally, I brought paper with me to let the guy know I need to go to this place. So I recommend pen and paper. I also recommend you call the stores or the pawn shops in that area, in Europe, beforehand, and make sure, because there's always one person there that speaks English, it might not be great English, but at least they can tell you what's going on in that store. And also, make sure you have everything lined up as far as financial, because I was running out of money just doing minor things, like Uber and Lyft, even though they say, oh, it's banned in that country, it's still technically going on. I'm not lying. People are like, I, I saw a spray painted on the wall while I was driving down. Uber and Lyft is illegal and you're going to jail in English and bad English, but it was in English. Trying to scare people. Don't let the locals scare you. They're going to make you feel like you need to do whatever they're telling you to do so you feel safe. I literally walked in and felt safe all the time I was in Europe. Because somebody there spoke English, even if it wasn't great English. And I'm telling you right now, even when I talked to people, there was at least one gamer at the hotel I was chilling at, and I was asking, where is the local spot nearby? And most of the time, the local spot was hidden in a place that looked like you should not be there. The minute you walked in, it was just a market chilling in the back. It was there. 
So don't be afraid to go out, go on the bus lines, do everything you need to do. Because I had Americans tell me in Europe, being obnoxious, oh, don't go there, you're gonna get mugged. I was like, what are you doing? I'm blending in, doing just everything that I'm supposed to, and I'm doing just fine. And the obnoxious ones make you feel scared that you shouldn't go to those stores, to those pawn shops. I'm telling you, they're friendly, they're cool, they're okay, except for GameStop. Don't go to GameStop in any part. I'm telling you right now, they'll still charge you for a freaking amount of lying. She, she charged me three dollars for a warranty on a DS game and then stapled the receipt together. So trust no one in GameStop. <laughs> but that's basically it. Oh yeah. The other thing I would say is expand your expand your scavenging. And don't buy, you know, go looking for things that you want, but also be willing to buy things that you know other people want you don't care about, so it's flipping, you know what I mean? Like you're, I buy stuff, I, I flip cars, I flip a couple houses, I flip washing machines, dryers, shotguns, anything I can find that I can make a deal on to fund my video game stuff, I buy and I flip. Amazon and eBay are your best friends. Uh, I don't buy anything on Amazon and eBay that's not broken. I like, I search for broken 3DO, broken Sega CD, broken whatever and buy a lot of broken stuff and fix what I can and make my money back and, and go on. Like, I don't buy brand new anything on eBay. I sell all kind of awesome stuff on eBay. I'm not that market. That's their, I'm not the market of eBay buyer. I'm definitely market eBay seller. So, but when you're in here, I don't I haven't looked at every booth that's in here, but I know my booth is well under the internet pricing of stuff. I beat the internet all day long when I sell it in person. I'm not trying to make it. If it's a hundred dollar game on, on Amazon, you can probably buy it for my booth for 75 bucks. Like I make deals to get stuff moved so I can get what I want when I want it. Um, there's guys in here who are not like that. They're holding on to a gross copy of Super Mario Duck Hunt that they want 20 bucks for and they will walk around and see that kind of stuff. Like, how is that a 20 hour game when everybody else got five bucks in here? People are weird, so you, you just have to keep digging and looking and searching. Um, really diligence, like that's the best word I can use. Diligence pays off in everything in life, but be also, diligent every day, look. Every day be hustling. Use your friends. Your friends are key. Tell your friends your list of what you need because they might be video game hunting and come across that game. I'm telling you, some of my friends over here found games that I needed and were like, yeah, go there. And I also too, when I travel, I go traveling for game hunting. I literally have everybody's list on a spreadsheet of what they want to pay for it and what they're asking for. And I, I even text them in the middle of the game hunting like, hey, are you sure you want this game for this price? Here's a, a picture of what it looks like. And they'll tell me yes or no. And then I'll buy that for them and they'll, they'll give me even a little bit extra money for you know my time just for doing that, for being a good friend. So make sure you tell your friends, all the people you know, hey, I'm looking for this game. If you find it, please let me know or can you pick it up for me and here's my price range. And I'm telling you, you'll find more games that way than anything else. The, the one thing I do want to say too is the restoration of things is very key to me. I like to be able to, to build something and make it work again if it was broken. Uh, both of the pinball machines that are in my booth right now were dead on arrival. I bought them both under $500, broken, not working. Uh, roughly a thousand bucks in parts and labor and time of my own invested in them, fixing them. They're each worth, I, I just sold the, uh, the high speed is actually sold. Um, I made a thousand bucks on that sale, and the other one is worth about fifteen hundred dollars more than I had in it. So there's, I, I get to play the game, I get to like learn about the game, and fix stuff, and learn about other stuff because there's parts in pinball machines and parts in arcades that are you know universal. There's stuff that you can oh this game has that thing that I can use in that game type. It's just like a car. You might find a bumper from a '68 that'll fit on a '69 type situation. Like you're gonna find parts, you're gonna find pieces buy broken stuff, I'm constantly buying lots of broken equipment. Um, my garage shows it too, and you see it and it's like, my God, look at the mess going on in this place. Um, but the fixing of it and the putting it back out into somebody who's gonna love it. The look on people's faces when they see a game at my booth or they buy a pinball machine for me that they want or an arcade machine, and they're like, dude, this thing's gorgeous. Like, and I, It makes me feel so good that it was hideous 
and found in like a dumpster and put back into like perfect condition for someone to cherish and make 25, 30 more years of life out of that game. Pinball and arcade machines were built to last five to seven years and then be replaced by the next model, the new thing coming in. They weren't supposed to last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. There's stuff right now, I have a buddy that's got stuff from the 40s. It's wood rail, there's no flippers, it's old school like bingo style pinball. They're gorgeous, but nobody wants them. They're worth three or four hundred bucks. There's stuff from the mid 80s that plays like crap, that was only put out for a certain amount of time. There's 400 of them left, and they're $30,000 machines. And they're like, why? It's the market. The same thing with like why stadium events is expensive. It's rare and, and it's crap. <laughs> and that no one's bought new, you know? So be on the lookout for things you want, definitely, but also really be on the lookout for things that you know other people want. Because that's the main genesis of what I sell is stuff that I don't play. I, I like role-playing games, I like beat-em-ups, I like sports games, I'm one of those guys, and, and shooters, that's about my genres for what I collect. Uh, everything else is up for grabs. And narrow, if you're narrowing your focus on one system, you're, you're, cutting, you're cutting your own feet off, you know what I mean? Like you, you gotta go out there with a panacopia of things that you're going to flip and buy and sell and you're gonna hold on to one or two of those things so they're free, you know what I mean? Like that's, that, I'm keeping these two games out of this whole lot, the rest of the lot will pay off everything I spent on it and then some, and I got two free games and more money to go. Yeah. It's the only way to do it, and, and be sane, and have your bank account not look terrible. So, yeah, you know? and also do your research before, if it doesn't look like what you think it does, double check, I'm telling you right now. And if they do not want to open up something, do not bother with yeah. it. Do not bother with I, I, I it. I don't go game hunting without my game bit. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of counterfeits, lots of things out there. Um, I, when I used to work at GameStop, people didn't realize that I was into retro. And I remember right when they started doing that retro, somebody put in a reproduction of, what was it? It was Mario Duck Hunt. And they got a reproduction label, and they put on their um, Kid Icarus. And they didn't think that I had an NES chilling in the back, because I was like, you know what, you're not going to pull me. And I tested it, and they just looked at me and, and walked up. <laughs> I got a free game that day, but it's like, do not trust anybody. Even the people that you know, at least test the game to make sure it works. And also, there is plenty of websites and apps that you can look up everything. So don't even hesitate. If they tell you no, I'm not going to do it, go okay, thank you, have a great day, and walk away. I'm telling you right now, either they're going to lower the price because they know something's wrong with it, or they're going to tell you, okay, go ahead, take your time. And that's what I recommend. I'm a fan of the late night score as well. I'm, I'm awake basically all day. I, I get four or five hours of sleep a night, and I'm back at it. So I'm, the one time, and the reason I take my game to the is I found a deal for a promo trigger in the box. It was gonna be a hundred bucks for you know that and like six other games and I went to buy it. I didn't bring my bit with me and I kind of looked at it real quick. It was dark. We were at a gas station. Ah, it's good, man. Here's the money. I got home. It was a Chrono Trigger game case, but the game inside was like Techno Super Bowl. So the actual game ROM is gone. It was a real Chrono Trigger casing, but it was a Super Techno Bowl, which is a twenty dollar game. But is it a hundred and twenty dollar game like Chrono Trigger? So I keep that on my shelf at home to remind me to always bring your stuff. If you're going to go for the expensive stuff, you got to make sure it's for real stuff. And I will cost myself a hundred bucks that time. You know I mean? It's a good learning lesson, but it's a, a rough learning lesson when you find them out that way. In fact, one of the games I have, I have one reproduction for sale right now, which is a Harvest Moon. And I've had like six people touch it and be like, Harvest Moon? Oh man, how much is this? And I'm like, 20 bucks. And they're like, this guy's got one for 400. I'm like, that's a reproduction. That's why it's 20 bucks. I tell you immediately, the only reproduction that I have for sale right now is Harvest Moon that I bought to play because I never played Harvest Moon and I want to see what all the hype was about, but I'm not spending 400 bucks on a Harvest Moon to see oh, yeah. if I like it. Generally, I'll buy a repro, I'll buy, I'll, I'll download it, I'll emulate it, whatever you want to call it. And if I love the game, then I'll go find it really. You know, I'll go find a complete box copy and make it happen. Trade for it, trade up to it. 
that's really what this is about, networking and, and being diligent. I can't say it again. My job. Diligence. 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 Always be hustling. Okay guys, so we're gonna open up to Q&A, so yeah. anybody got a question? t Valley, you're first. What was our best find we ever got? You wanna go first? I've got a couple. Go ahead, give me a couple. I, I had a score at one sale where I got a Turbo Duo, which was Turbo Graphics Turbo Duo, uh, $5 along with a Turbo Graphics console for $5, along with a stand-up Galaga arcade machine for 100 bucks. So like, that was like the deal of the year, and that was two years ago. There's an episode on my show where you can watch all that. And I've also found a Nintendo television that I paid $200 for. Didn't haggle. She was like, CRT Shark Television, 200 bucks. And I was like, that's a Nintendo television, and it's worth $1,000. And and that's not the greatest score, but like it is to me because it's Nintendo TV. So, uh, C and Retro just picked one up the other day for like twenty bucks or some ridiculous number, fifty bucks. Not bad. Um, and and some pinball machines. I I flipped some pinball machines for some pretty big money that I didn't have a lot in. Um, an F14 Tomcat that I spent four hundred dollars to buy. I spent thirty seven dollars in parts to make it work. A couple of fuses were blown and a transistor. And that thing came back to life. I threw LEDs in it for another hundred bucks, and I sold it for thirty thousand or three thousand dollars. On top of uh, the guy traded me a trans light for a different game that I have, which is the back the back glass picture, a trans light for a Munsters, but I totally want that game one day. So I thought that was a hell of a deal. Um, there's been a lot. I mean, I, that's what I do. Is find the deals. I, I call myself King of Pickups on. on uh, Twitter and I fucking back it up, excuse my language, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For me it was, uh, I got a lot of Game Gear games and uh, Game Gear, and it was $20 altogether. It had Samurai Showdown. Okay, thank you, Mouser. It was uh, Samurai Showdown, it had, it had a couple fillers, and then it also had, uh, I think, uh, Tasmanian Devil and all that. It was twenty dollars for forty games, and it was, it was just a mom getting rid of the games. She didn't care anymore. I found it at a yard sale, so that was my score. I, I, was say, I brought. I have a little list of some of the stuff that I bought and flipped. I paid fifty bucks for a Terminator Two arcade cabinet with the machine guns on top. You know that one? Sold it for eight hundred fifty dollars. It was working when I bought it. Uh, the Tomcat was on it. A hundred dollar Tron arcade that I sold for thirty eight. I spent, I think, 200 bucks in parts to pick that thing up, too. Um, I prepared a, a Bucky O'Hare Nintendo cartridge that needed a new transit, a new capacitor, and I swapped the capacitor and booted right up. I was so proud of that little thing. Uh, it's not super expensive, it's like a $100 game, but it made me feel good to bring it back to life, you know? Um, just last month, I built a gentleman. I, I buy, I build you an arcade. If you want something custom made, I can make you anything, I can build you whatever you want. I built a guy a 12,000 game multi game retro pie multi game I spent 800 bucks to build it. Or the or the body parts and stuff, the, the sides and pieces from Amazon. There's tips on there that you can build on Amazon. 400 bucks and then buttons and time. About 800 bucks is what I what I had in. I traded him that for a Jungle Hunt, which is also a Jungle King arcade Taito Jungle King, a Pac-Man, a Tempest, a Moon Patrol, a Super Cobra, and a Frogger arcade cabinets. That trade alone is like, each one of those machines is roughly a thousand bucks. The Tempest is like a three thousand dollar machine. So like, for eight hundred bucks, that's a fucking steal. You know what I mean? And he was like, get them out of my house. I hate them. None of them work. My kids have broken them all. I want one machine that works. So I built him one machine that worked with twelve thousand games in it and took all these classic arcades to my arcade. I love it. I love doing it. It's the thrill of the hunt. I, I would I would sell everything too. I'm not physically attached to anything because it wasn't mine as a kid. All that stuff got thrown away years ago. So like, I sell everything so I can buy something else that I want. It's cool. If that's the addiction. If, it, if you could put games up to my veins. That's so we you know what you do. You do know what you do. <laughs> that's what she said. That's what she said. Hey. Damn. Damn. 
what is that thing going to do? It's just going to sit there and look sad, and somebody else can have it sit and look sad in their house. I'll take 10000 bucks. That's how I feel about it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> call me crazy. That money could go to a lot more cool things. Like pinball machines. To make pay your rent. You can play, that, that's really the thing, too. You can emulate any game you want to play pretty much video game-wise. It's in the Retro pinball. Pie. And pinball is virtual pinball as well, but it's not the same. You have to have a real pinball machine to play that game like it was intended to be played. And there's only so many of them. So it's, I've gone from a world of like, I, <laughs> Nintendo and Super Nintendo are rare-ish. You know, it's harder and harder to find. But I've gone into a world of like, Rocking Horse poop rare pinball machines. There, there was 500 of them made. There's 30 of them left. That kind of thing. Like, everything I see defined is that a very small number of how many there are left in the world. And to be able to fix that and preserve another one and keep it alive, that's why I do it. Well, that's because people who have money buy them just for power, and then they don't keep them updated. Oh, yeah, like yeah, that. Just and they go, oh, well, I don't want this anymore, and they just sell it to somebody who doesn't even care about it. Any other questions? Any questions? smiling and happy, they generally smile and are happy back to you, generally. Um, and if you keep it civil and kind and courteous, that's, I haven't found the discrepancy of people trying to like take advantage of me because I'm wearing a game shirt, or like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing because he's wearing a game shirt. I have a baby face, so everybody just takes advantage of me. But I basically, I, I still wear game shirts. I still wear whatever I'm gonna wear. I'm not gonna change how I look just to go get a deal. Because I've had people that I wear regular t-shirts, like just plain ones. They're still gonna treat me the same no matter what I do. It's how you, like how he says, like how you walk up to the person. You walk up like, dude, like I don't, I don't, no, just walk up, act normal. They're gonna be cool with you. And if they see a game t-shirt and they raise the price just because that, it's not worth the sell. I'm just gonna go to another place and buy something else. That's what I say. I do have a theory about like don't give up the ghost. You know what I mean, like if you're there for a specific thing, you're at a yard sale that you was on that morning, and like there's one game that you know is worth three hundred dollars, and then you're asking twenty bucks for it, and you got there first. Like don't get in there and be like, like again, lowball that number they're already asking for. In fact, offer more money. Be like, you know what, this game is worth more than you're asking. Here's another twenty bucks for it, type of thing. Be that guy. Put that kind of karma out in the world because you're gonna find the deals that you don't even have to work for. So like, why try and fuck over somebody else? You know what I mean? Like, at least be somewhat fair with them. But don't don't get me wrong. Don't turn down a great deal when it's in your face either, and like be like, oh man, that means worth five thousand dollars more than you're asking. Like, you can go a little bit higher. Don't get don't pay the money. But like, that's the point. That if you're not making money, you're losing money in this in this world. And if you're not playing the game, it's just sitting there on your shelf, and it's part of your collection that you'll never touch and play like what are you doing with it i i personally everything in my room is touched and played like a oh, lot and if not it gets sold it gets sold and there's about 150 things that will never get sold that's it the rest of it comes and goes and i buy lots and lots of things so. yeah for me i just play childhood games and i have modern that's pretty much it I have like one or two toys in my childhood. I have my Voltron and a metal full on Voltron. I got him. And I think I got my Batwing from the 1989 Batman movie with Missing well, Wing. Do you nerd keeps giving me toys, so I'm going to have a room full of toys before the end of it. I don't know what's going to happen. Any other questions? Huh? Huh? 
they love their questions. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. She just, uh, she announced something I'm not going to announce yet because <laughs> I'm going to mess with you. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming. We're going to stay back here if you yeah, guys if want you were, photos or if you want to talk. If y'all were asking all of us last night, hang out. We're going to take a group photo. Captain, you're not supposed to announce that. I just announced it. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Check out our dumb channel, my dumb channel, her amazing channel, and my dumb channel, Captain Retro, Linda, a.k.a. The Gamer Girl.